Okay, folks, here we are in the foyer today. If you remember at one time, we had the beautiful 1996 green tile here in the foyer. It was also in front of the fireplace, in the bathroom. Uh, this house is two stories built on a concrete foundation. So it's got solid poured concrete floors. So when they originally built the house, what they did was they attached the tile directly to the concrete, which that's you know, perfectly acceptable until you go to tear it up. Um, so when we went to go pull this tile up, that, that is, is this, honestly the first time I've run across uh, pulling tile up off of concrete. So, you know, I did what everybody else does. I went YouTube it, right? <laughs> and there's about 20 different methods that you can use to try to get it up. I think I tried every single one of them and none of them worked until I got this bad boy. This is a rotary hammer. Uh, this one happens to be a DeWalt. I'm just kind of a DeWalt fan. Uh, you can go to Harbor Freight and get them, you know, for about half this price, but I, I tend to, if I'm gonna buy a tool, I wanna buy one that I know is gonna pretty much last me forever. And so I tend to go to the DeWalt because I've always had good luck with them. Uh, and then of course it has this big, huge chisel here in the end of it, and that's what does the damage. And so, uh, Basically, all you do is uh, this thing vibrates in and out. Just, it's kind of like a mini jackhammer. And so by putting it up against the tile, when you pull the trigger, it'll start vibrating. And uh, it'll actually work that tile loose and break it up. Sometimes it comes up in pieces. Sometimes it comes up in, in, in huge blocks. Not really the whole tile, but in, in, in huge sections. It just depends on how good it was installed. Uh, so in here in the foyer, it's relatively easy. Uh, it came up in pretty good sections, um, but you see it does still leave the mortar. So if you was laying, you know, something smooth over this, like a vinyl or something like that, you would have to come back in here and do a little bit more chisel work to bust this mortar up. We're not. We're doing laminate flooring. It's eight millimeter thick and it's got a two millimeter pad under it. And so for what we're doing, this mortar isn't going to affect us. This, this is pretty much the extent we'll do here. Obviously, we'll sweep it up and clean up the, the debris a little bit better here. But uh, for what we're doing and the, and the new floor and we're installing, this will work. Well, while Randall was working on the tile inside, I decided to take some time and work on our light fixtures and our bathroom fixtures. Um, they were all still in really good working order. They were just a little dated. We had a lot of brass, um, a lot of things that, that were just very dated to the 90s. And so even though they still worked, we wanted to update them. So how do you do that without spending a fortune? We're trying to do this on a little bit of a budget as well. So we decided to go the spray paint route. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is we had a lot of can lights in the house and they were just kind of dingy and beige colored just from wear and tear and so we decided to get some nice spray paint for those and I think they look brand new. Um, we also did the, the vents in the ceiling and here is one of the original vents and you can see it's just a little discolored and, and it's got a little bit of um, wear and tear on it and so we painted those out and I think they look like brand new and so the paint that we used for those is actually a rust-oleum paint 
This does not have a shiny finish because we didn't want it to be a metallic finish or a, a super shiny. This is just called a flat white and it does bond to plastic, metal, wood, anything that you want to spray it on. It's about $4 a can. Um, and so far we have only used about half a can on all the things that we've done. We probably will end up using about two cans of this rather than replacing all of these light fixtures and vents. So these vents that we have spray painted out, we price them to replace all of these is um, about $15 per vent. And since we have about 20 vents in this house, we thought that you know $8 in paint was a whole lot better than $20 per vent. Um, so it's a great thing to use there, update everything, and it looks like brand new on a budget. And we also decided that we were gonna spray paint out the light fixtures in the bathrooms. Um, I'll just show you a little bit. This was the piece that was in the downstairs bathroom and originally it was shiny brass. And so again, we took the spray paint. Um, I'll show you what we used a little while in just a little while. Um, this is almost a textured finish, so it kind of hides any blemishes that may be in the light fixture to begin with. We spray painted those and then we also spray painted the cups that go around the, the light bulbs. The paint that we used on those light fixtures is an indoor outdoor paint, so it will withstand moisture, it will withstand um, the water that, that may be on them in a bathroom. This one is a metallic, it is called satin nickel, and that's what gives it that little bit of a texture there. Um, and then you'll also see if you YouTube it or uh, Google things, you'll find out that they recommend that you sand the products before you paint them. We did not. We actually tested prior um, to, to finishing these out. We tested on one and it withheld perfectly fine. We scrubbed and scrubbed and the paint did not come off even though we did not sand. We just wanted to clean it really good, get all the debris, wipe it down so there's nothing loose um, and, and no dirt on them before you paint and everything holds and bonds really well. So just so you can compare prices, these light fixtures for the bathrooms are still readily available in your uh, home improvement stores. These run about $30 each fixture. Um, we redid three fixtures for our three bathrooms. It took us about three and a half cans of spray paint, so round on up to four. Four cans of spray paint in our area is $7 a can, so roughly $28 instead of about $60 to redo three bathrooms. Inside of our bathtubs and all of our faucets, we also had these fixtures here that were also very shiny brass. Uh, we wanted to update them as well, but again, on a budget, we decided to try the spray paint route. This one is actually the same brand as what we used on our light fixtures, but this one is called a titanium silver color. So it's got a little bit more of a sheen. It's a little slicker and will hold up a whole lot better with the water inside the shower. Okay, today's a new day on our roundabout life. We're finally getting some progress made here. Uh, if you guys remember in the first episode, we had talked about having some contractors kind of help us Give us, give us some help with scraping the ceilings, getting rid of the popcorn ceiling, making everything smooth. That has almost been completed. They still got a little bit to go in the garage. The garage gave them a little bit of fit because the uh, sheetrock was actually pulling away. And so they had to go back in and re-screw it and all that fun stuff. But just, uh, we're in here in the master bath. And if you remember, the whole reason why we bought the house was this light fixture right here, which is now gone and replaced. And let me just tell you, this light right here is really cool. It's, it's way a, better, guys. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I mean, I, I wish you could see the layout a little bit better in here, but this is in the middle of the master bath, and they had a chandelier hanging down. So, you know, I'm 6'3". And it was an old, ugly yeah. chandelier. <laughs> and so when I tried to walk under it, you know, I would even hit my head on it. You know, why would you put that in the middle of the master bath? I don't know. You know, over the tub. Like this one over here, okay, I get it. It's cool, you know, princess scene. I, I, I can understand that, but here, <laughs> come on. But anyways, we bought this LED light. It's a flush mount light. It was like 19 bucks. It's equivalent to a 100 watt light bulb. Super bright. And it's super, super bright, bright, and it's awesome. And there's so many other lights in here. I mean, you saw we got one over the tub, you got the big eight light bar over the sink. There's one over the toilet. One over the shower, so this worked out very nicely. But uh, I just want to give you a walkthrough and kind of show you some of the ceilings and uh, 
kind of show you the work that they did. And uh, you know, if you're in the Dalton area, I'll put the guy's name and number in the comments under this video. So you can, you know, if you need somebody that does really good work in this area, give him a call, he'll help you out. So here is the master bedroom. Uh, you can see we have started putting the can lights back up. Uh, we got those freshly painted. Uh, I think we showed that earlier in this video. But you see the ceilings are nice and smooth. Now, this house was built in 1996. And for some reason, I don't know how good this will pick up on camera here, but you see there's still one spot right here they've got to work on. They had an awful time in these ceilings to this house as you know the popcorn ceiling came off very easily. We'll just give you a walk down the hallway. Yes, I know some of the light fixtures are still hanging. Uh, here's another good spot right here. Uh, as they started, after they got this popcorn ceiling down and they started doing the mud and the paint, they would, I mean, everything would look great. They would leave for the day. They would come back in the next day and it would be killing. Uh, we still haven't found out the exact cause of that, but it really caused us some delays as far, because they kept having to go back over these ceilings. I mean, I, and, I, and I know it had to drive them crazy, but some of these ceilings, they redid spots two, three, four times. But it's looking great and uh, we're coming along. We're ready for paint. Yeah, we're going to start the painting process today, and uh, we've got carpet coming in on Thursday to go in. We've actually got the flooring downstairs, uh, the hardwood flooring that's going to go in, the laminate flooring, I should say, not hardwood. But uh, to get these, I mean, everything was on standstill until we got these ceilings done, because obviously it causes a huge mess. You can see, you know, these walls have been wiped down, but you still see a little residue. And then obviously here on the back floors, the residue from scraping ceilings. It's just a huge mess. So really nothing can happen until we get all that done. So, but we're moving right along. Stay tuned for the next episode on Roundabout Life. And uh, guys, if you're liking what you're seeing, please, we're, we're a new channel. So uh, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, tell your friends and family, and we look forward to seeing you on many more adventures. Love is a journey, we'll stay.